Caroline were married for 18 years. They had two boys during that time. We obtained the divorce papers and found they were going through a custody battle when Dylan disappeared. The boy had flown to southwest Colorado to be with his father when he was last seen alive. My ex-wife and I both agree that Dylan's not the kind of kid that would run away. But I also think that there is a possibility that Dylan was torn between his parents. Dylan disappeared November 18, 2012. Court documents state the father and son had fought on their previous visit. They had not been getting along. A massive and long search took place centered around Velocito Lake and Bayfield, Colorado. The tensions are very high between all of us, specifically with mom and my older son, Corey. And Teresa, we should know a lot more. We also got some new breaking information just within the last half hour. We have learned that Mark Redwine has decided that he has not agreed to extradition back to Colorado. What that means is it's likely to delay his return here to this county to start facing those charges. Now, also on your point, there are questions that will be answered in this building tomorrow afternoon by prosecutors, by detectives. Clearly though, according to the Denver 7 legal analyst, Dan Recht, this is a strong case against Dylan's dad. When you put all those pieces of the puzzle together, it it starts to look like a convincing puzzle. Denver 7 legal analyst Dan Rex says prosecutors have a strong circumstantial case against Dylan Redwine's dad. But he's sitting in jail. He's not getting out. There's a $1 million cash bond. But that doesn't mean the grand jury indictment did not include questions and surprises. Many want to know why it took nearly five years to file the charges and why prosecutors decided to only file second-degree murder charges. Found. Crew searching Middle Mountain near Viacito Lake making that sad discovery. The teenager's been missing since last November. Mark, his remains found very close to his father's home. Mike, less than 10 miles away from his father's home. Take a look. This is the Facebook page set up by the volunteers who had their own effort to find him. On the front, pardon me, on the front there is a message, a heartbreaking message about today's discovery. This high and rugged terrain up to 11,000 feet is where search teams found Dylan's remains. These are photos from the five day search. For weeks, this area was off limits because it was covered with snow. The bones and other items found were tested by the CBI. Scientists then determined the remains belonged to Dylan. His parents were told late this afternoon of the positive match. Dylan lived in Monument and was last seen alive on November 18th when he was picked up by his father at the Durango airport for a court ordered Thanksgiving visit. His father says he ran errands the next day. When he returned, Dylan was gone. Later that day, he was reported missing. Speaking to our news partner late today, the Denver Post, Dylan's father says he was blindsided by this news. Police are now calling this case a criminal investigation. Early on, they determined Dylan did not run away, but still have yet to get into the specific. I miss my kid. I miss my son. I miss all the things that he's missing out on. And for Dylan's mom, it's been four and a half years of waiting and wondering. Many people suspected it. It became real on Saturday when police put handcuffs on your ex-husband. Surprised? No. I was not surprised. Here's the timeline that helps explain how we got here. Dylan Redwine went missing from his father's home near Durango on November 19th of 2012. Ten days later, the county sheriff's office executed a search warrant at the home of Dylan's dad. We have since learned inside they found traces of Dylan's blood and cadaver dogs picked up scents inside the house and inside Mark Redwine's truck. Then, seven months after Dylan's disappearance, now in June of 2013, the CBI confirmed it had found Dylan's remains on a nearby mountain. More than two years later, now in August of 2015, La Plata County Sheriff's named Mark Redwine a person of interest. Then last weekend, 1,707 days after Dylan disappeared, outside of Seattle, Washington, law enforcement placed Mark Redwine in handcuffs. A couple of hours ago as Mark Redwine faced a judge for the first time. Yeah, it's probably a registered psychopath, narcissist. A former FBI profiler now writing a textbook on violent crime, Pete Klismet says he has Mark Redwine's number. 
Is there any doubt in your mind that Mark Redwine killed his son? No. La Plata investigators hired Klismet in 2015 to review the evidence in the disappearance of Dylan Redwine. After three months of digging, he says the evidence pointed to one person. I simply wanted to look at everything I could look at and, and try to figure out who did this. Um, and it was an inescapable conclusion that it was Mark. Court records reveal investigators found Dylan Redwine's blood in his father's living room. A cadaver dog alerted in that same room and in his truck. Most bizarre, the indictment says Dylan had seen compromising photos of his father and planned to confront him. Could that have caused Mark to go into a rage with his son yelling at him, perhaps? It may. If that is what provoked Mark Redwine, Klismet says, it will come out in court where he hopes there will be justice for Dylan at last. Do they have a strong case? Oh, yeah, I, I believe they've got a strong case. Mark Redwine, 17-1. There's no question in my mind that this case will go to trial. Mark will not plead guilty uh, because he's a narcissist. He believes he can lie his way out of anything. Is it fair for the community to wonder why it took so long? I think so. La Plata County Sheriff Sean Smith. We took the time to do it right because we get one shot and we didn't want to mess up. Your initial reaction when you learned there were handcuffs on Mark Redwine? I was the guy that got to send that text that said he's in custody and it felt really good. Dylan's dad Mark is in custody and charged with the murder. Now the county DA will work to convince a jury they have the right guy. It's time to bring justice on this case. It's time for resolution. We've waited long enough. So we made the right decision to be patient, but the time is now. And we're Unthinkable acts. Prosecutors point to lewd and disgusting photos as an explanation for something no parent could ever imagine doing. Nearly five years after Dylan Redwine disappeared on a court-ordered visit during Thanksgiving, his father, Mark Redwine, is arrested and charged with murder. Tonight, only on Denver 7, you'll hear from the only other person to see those graphic images. Mark Redwine might have flown into a rage, compromising photos that Dylan and his older brother, Corey, had seen. Only Denver 7's Jacqueline Allen spoke with Corey tonight, who explains in graphic detail what those photos show and what Dylan planned to do. He's just a sick person and he's fine with being that person. From the very beginning, Corey Redwine has been convinced his own father killed his little brother. We didn't know what the outcome would be, but we've always known that Mark was in some way, shape or form involved in this. The indictment states Dylan Redwine had seen compromising pictures of Mark Redwine and planned to confront him. Later, the indictment states those photos provoked a violent response from Mark Redwine. Have you seen the photos? I've seen them. Corey says the photos involve Mark eating his own feces, but Corey believes those photos were just the beginning of a confrontation. I think Dylan had a lot more than just pictures that he wanted to get across to Mark. Mark Redwine's arrest is bittersweet for Corey, who wants justice for the brother he lost, but has also lost whatever relationship he might have had with his father. I'm sad that I've ever had to go through this, that Dylan had to go through this, and that, you know, all of this past five years has just, you know, been about who killed Dylan when it should have never happened in the first place. It's exciting to know that justice is coming for my little brother. Zoomed innocent, of course, uh, but when you read the indictment, they have a lot of evidence. Denver 7 legal analyst Dan Reck reviewed the grand jury indictment released after Red Wine's arrest. What is the most damning evidence that the prosecution has right now? The most harmful evidence to Mark Redwine is that Dylan's blood is found in many places in Mark's house and in his truck. Mark Redwine's arrest and the details inside the indictment confirmed what family members have believed since Dylan disappeared back in November of 2012, shortly after arriving in La Plata County for a court-ordered Thanksgiving visit with his dad. Do you think Mark did it? Absolutely. Why do you say that? Be because it is violent. Redwine's first wife talked with Denver 7 from her home in Arizona. Betsy Horvath is not Dylan's mom, but she long suspected her husband had something to do with Dylan's disappearance. My reaction is that right now we are on the steps of a long road. And this this is the beginning, 
and hopefully we can get justice for Dylan. As you see it right now with what they've revealed, how strong is this case? Well, it's a circumstantial case, but a strong circumstantial case. So when you put all those pieces of the puzzle together, it, it starts to look like a convincing puzzle. Colorado. Now, what could be the appalling truth is beginning to emerge. I want everybody to know how much I love that boy. After five painful years, the man who grieved for his son has the finger pointed at him in a stunning turn of events. Damning new evidence, bringing new charges. It was Thanksgiving 2012. 13-year-old budding athlete Dylan Redwine was visiting his dad, Mark, at his house in the San Juan Mountains of Southwest Colorado. It was a court-ordered visit. Dylan's mom and dad went through a contentious divorce. Mark says his son was sleeping when he went off to run some errands, and when he returned, Dylan was gone. Hundreds of volunteers searched for the little boy, but Dylan was never found. His father appeared distraught. My focus right now is focusing on Dylan and what he needs from us to help find him. Then, seven months later, a somber discovery. The melting snow reveals some of Dylan's remains about 10 miles north of his dad's house off a twisting path deep in the woods. His devastated big brother, Corey, told our Denver affiliate KDVR he was in shock. You know, when something like this happens, you just think of all the good times. And there's so many, you know, it's hard waking up and not having that right spot in my heart. His mother, Elaine, was heartbroken. He no longer can soothe me when I'm stressed out. Mark's theory at the time, his son got lost and couldn't get cell phone reception. This is all speculative, is that if he couldn't get reception being down in the valley on the road that I live in at my house, that maybe he thought by trying to get to higher ground, he might be able to pick up cell phone service on his cell phone. But Elaine wasn't buying it. She says she knows exactly what happened to Dylan and who killed him. She believes it's her ex-husband, Mark, Dylan's very own father. From the very beginning when Dylan went missing, I was 100% sure, as I still am, that Mark was involved in Dylan's disappearance as well as, unfortunate, his untimely death. Cops appeared to believe it too. Nearly three years after Dylan vanished, they named Mark a person of interest and called the death suspicious. We're pursuing this as a criminal investigation. Mark has consistently denied any involvement. Redwine is arrested. This police body cam footage showing him captured and cuffed in Bellingham, Washington. The stunning grand jury indictment finally details the years-long investigation. Dylan's blood found in Mark Redwine's living room. Cadaver dogs indicating a deceased person had been in his living room and in the bed of his pickup truck. In a study of Dylan's skull revealing blunt force trauma at two locations, consistent with tool marks from a knife. But what on earth could drive a man to viciously murder his own 13-year-old son? After five years, a bombshell secret emerges that cops believe turned the father into an alleged killer. Investigators say Dylan saw compromising photos of his dad, and on that fateful Thanksgiving trip, planned to confront his father about them. Dylan's brother, Corey, telling other media outlets that the pictures were, quote, disgusting, allegedly depicting Mark Redwine in women's makeup, wearing a diaper, and other details too nauseating to repeat. Now, just this month, Mark Redwine makes his first pretrial bond appearances. The grieving father lost his son and has been falsely accused of killing him. Mark Redwine is currently locked up awaiting trial, and Dylan's mommy Lane can finally breathe a sigh of relief. It's Durango. So, Matt, tell us what happened. You know, Karen, this thing was supposed to last only about five minutes, just an advisement hearing here in La Plata County. It's gone on for 45 minutes. We just uh, wrapped up here. Some big headlines from this uh, first appearance in La Plata County. The judge lowering bond to $750,000 from a million cash-only bond. His defense said that that was just too high for this case. And we did hear from Elaine Redwine and uh, her son. They say they are fearful for their lives because of Mark Redwine. This case definitely is going to draw a lot of attention. There were a, a full courtroom of people up there. 
17-1. Mark Redwine may be behind bars, but this case, one that has dragged on for five years now, is far from over. What it says is that it's it's going to be a difficult case. Legal analyst Karen Steinhauser says prosecutors have their work cut out for them, considering this is a circumstantial case. We don't have what, what we refer to as the smoking gun. We don't have an eyewitness. We don't have somebody who can say, I saw the two of them together. Mark Redwine faces a second-degree murder charge and child abuse charges in the death of his son Dylan after a grand jury indicted him. It's an indictment where the grand jury has said, we believe, we find that there is probable cause to believe that the defendant committed these charges. It is a far cry from proof beyond a reasonable doubt. Redwine still needs to be extradited to Colorado, and Steinhauser says many other issues could delay any sort of trial. A big one will be where will they hold the trial. Issues around whether there's going to be a change of venue, given how small the county is, given how many people may know um, his father, may know the defendant. So I, I believe that this case is going to be a, a long time before we ever get to a jury. Colorado teen whose remains were just found seven months after he vanished. Action 7 News reporter Melissa Colorado has more from Bayfield. The Pine River by Eagle Park in Bayfield, Colorado. This was one of Dylan Redwine's favorite hangout spots. We were drawn to it, I guess. It's where we meet Ryan Nava. We made plans to hang out. And yeah, I was looking forward to it. The friend that was supposed to meet up with Dylan on the day the 13-year-old disappeared. We were texting. Nava doesn't remember the last text he got from Dylan since November 19. The day Dylan Redwine went missing, Nava has been part of the search efforts. Now the search is over. Dylan's bones were found several miles away from his father's home in Vicito Lake. It was just like a whole seven months of all this hard work and hope and stuff. Just Authorities say his father, Mark Redwine, was the last person to see his son. Nava, who stayed overnight at Redwine's house, says he never sensed any tension between father and son. When I was around with Dylan and his father, or when I was around them, they seemed like, uh, like best friends. I mean, they were really... A missing children, I, child. I understand how gut wrenching that is. The mother of Jessica Ridgway speaking from the heart tonight about another missing Colorado child, Dylan Redwine. Seven News reporter Mark Stewart is live. Mark, this is Sarah Ridgway's first time to speak publicly since Jessica was found. And she's speaking because she feels compelled to do something good. Tonight, she took part in a vigil here at this park named after her daughter to help find this missing boy far away on the other side of the state. Sarah Ridgway has never met Dylan Redwine or his mother. We understand where she's coming from and that she has support out there from us too. Yet four months after her own hardship, she's now talking, hoping her words will help find this boy. I just want to make sure there's awareness for other kids that are missing. Despite a series of searches on the western slope, Dylan Redwine hasn't been seen since he was visiting his father near Durango. I want everybody to be able to look around and pay attention to who they see and what kids they see. In this park, named after her daughter Jessica, a small crowd of friends and strangers said prayers and held flashlights to the sky, a tribute to Dylan. Today is his 14th birthday. That was heart wrenching that week was. I couldn't imagine how it's been for him. I really have a concern that you heard him and his bones are out there just laying and you don't even care. An emotional plea from Elaine Redwine, Dylan's mother, today on Dr. Phil. 14-year-old Dylan Redwine went missing three months ago. He was last seen during a court-ordered visit with his father in Vallecito. I didn't notice his backpack not being there. There was a fishing pole at the house, and it was Dylan's fishing pole. That fishing pole was never found. Taping of the episode several weeks ago was the first time Redwine's parents had spoken with each other besides text messaging in three years. Did not you hurt him? No, Elaine, I wouldn't hurt him. What kind of mother do you, are you to even think that I was capable of doing something like I that? The teen's mom believes his father had something to do with his disappearance and probably killed him. When you're mad at somebody, your main focus is to get even or get back with them and hurt them. That's how your mind works. Really? Yes. 
Really? So because you said it makes it true. Police have not named any suspects in the case. Dylan's dad thinks he was abducted while walking to a friend's house six miles away. And today, he claimed he wasn't the last one to see Dylan, telling Dr. Phil his mail carrier spotted his son before he vanished. On the day Dylan went missing, I saw two boys walking down the road, not too far from where Dylan lives. It was around 1.30 in the afternoon. Based on the arguing and finger pointing, it appears Dylan had a rough family life. His dad says he divorced his mom because she had a drinking problem. The bottom line is we're all suspects, regardless of what the law enforcement says. And whether we've taken polygraph tests or not, it doesn't matter what the results are because it hasn't eliminated anybody. Will you take a polygraph? And do it. You know, I've given them, I've cooperated with them in every way. Anything that they've asked me for, I've been willing to do. Anything that they've suggested that I do, whether it be sitting at the house waiting for the phones to ring or, or going to walk through the front door, I'm, I'm willing to do whatever I need to do. And that's what I want everybody to understand is that, you know, my focus is on Dylan and, and what's going on with him and, and trying to keep the investigation moving forward in, in whatever necessary means that that is and so you know in cooperating with them and, and we can keep the focus you know on the search for Dylan and that's really where I'm at with all of this so you went to run errands were you gonna take him with you to run errands well there was some discussion that he had had with me the night before about leaving with me so I could drop him off in the Bayfield area with one of his friends that had been trying to text him or he had been communicating with mm -hmm. you know as he indicated to me that he was up till four o'clock the morning before and that he was tired from being in the airport most of the day and his travel from Colorado Springs to Durango. I laughed at him kind of jokingly because I know him. If he ain't got to get up, he, he's not likely to get up and he's not the kind of kid that's going to get up at 630 if he doesn't have to. But, you know, his friends are important and I know they're important to me. So, you know, there was a possibility, but it, it doesn't surprise me that he elected not to get up when I left and when I left and he acknowledged that everything that I was saying to him and that I would be back he knew that when I came back I would be working on getting him down to his friends and that's part of the struggle that we all have is you know what happened to him between the time I left and the time I got back and that's what nobody seems to be able to answer exactly. um, can you tell me about your plans for Thanksgiving well, because he was with me for such a short period of time, we, we had touched on a few things. One of the things we talked about was going to my brother David's house in Castle Rock. Um, I know his friends were important to him, so we were wanting to make sure that he had adequate time to be with his friends. Um, you know, the, the, the basically the plan was Monday and Tuesday he would spend with his friends, maybe Wednesday. You know, we had talked a little bit maybe about going bowling or doing something as an activity, not with just me and him, but with his friends included. And then we'd have Thanksgiving Day to ourselves. Or there was possibility that we could travel on Wednesday and get to, to get to my brother's house. So, you know, none of that ever got finalized. I mean, we were just focusing on the next day and what we were going to do and how that was going to take place. And that's as far as we really ever got. You know, I know his friends are important to him, and I certainly don't expect him to spend a week with me and spend every waking moment with me when he's got us, he's grown up in this community and he has tons of people around here that love and care about him. Yeah. Um, so he was going to spend a whole week with you. When was the last time he saw you? Um, I think probably sometime in early September I had flown him over from Colorado Springs on a round trip ticket at that point. So he came over here and probably spent three or four days with me in that. And then, you know, obviously we got him back to the plane and got him back safely to his mom. And, you know, in that case, it was a, a transfer flight from the Durango airport or the Denver airport to a flight leaving him to Colorado Springs. And it was my goal to keep him on a direct flight or one that he never had to change planes with him because there was some controversy between mom and I about him being 13 years old and being able to do those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when I got the flight for him, I made sure that it was a flight that he could get on. And Standing in disbelief while surrounded by the bittersweet sounds of a violin, 
Dylan Redwine's family and friends are saying goodbye. Under the gloomy sky, Dylan's memorial, dedicated this weekend and engraved with his name for everyone to see and celebrate, is meant to shine a light on a young boy who won't soon be forgotten. There was always something that I was learning from him. With his brother's picture at his side, Corey Redwine spoke of the support he and his family have received from across Colorado and the country. Support that began just hours after Dylan vanished while visiting his dad last Thanksgiving, and support that only continued to grow until the teen's remains were found in June. You never know when the one person that you thought would always be with you by your side, walk and talk with you, would, you know, suddenly just be gone one day. In the crowd of mourners, there was one face noticeably absent. Dylan's father, Mark Redwine, the last person to have reported seeing the teen alive, he chose to stay away from this week. Pay just $1,000, you'll get a picture proving missing teen Dylan Redwine is still alive. Pony up 4000 and a kidnapper will deliver Dylan safe and sound just in time for Christmas. It would be a dream come true for the thousands praying for his safe return. And scammers know it. Scammers take advantage of any circumstances, and especially when it's a high emotional one like this, where a little boy's missing and his life's in danger. Rebecca Branch at the Attorney General's office has never seen anyone stoop so low. This is the first ransom scam that I've heard of within our state. The con first popped up on Facebook, in the same place where people are turning for any information they can get on Dylan. Mixed in was this message from the red wine trickster. Abbas Gaddafi, claiming to be the boss of a kidnapping gang in southern Colorado, asking for such a small amount of money, people might just take the bait. People are more likely to send it because they more likely have it. And more likely to send it because the scam popped up on what looked like a credible site. Because it's really easy for anybody, anywhere, to come up with a message, post it on Facebook, and have it show up and look legitimate. This scam is anything but legitimate from a predator making a bad situation. A place serving up slices of pizza and a slice of life inside historic Bayfield. Mr. Ott, what does that headline say to you? It means exactly what this picture shows us, justice for Dylan. For Elliot Ott and many others in this community, news of the arrest of Dylan's dad was not a surprise. I think it brings a little peace and justice to people's hearts and souls. Dylan would come here and eat pizza with his buddies. Christine Martin owns AJ's. Honestly, I think that the whole town already was 99% sure that this was gonna happen eventually. Dylan's baseball jersey is the first thing you see when you walk inside the door. We care about our, our kids and this has been um, the most horrible thing that has ever happened in this town since I've lived here. So while the wheels of justice now begin to turn, this community where Dylan once called home works to heal while promising never to forget. I think it's a relief, a big relief that maybe finally after this many years, what, four and a half years, uh, that there's a little justice being possibly it's going to be done over this term. Why do you say that? Because it is violent. She too was involved in a custody dispute with him. They had two kids together. According to this indictment, he told Horvath that he would kill the kids before he let her have them. I didn't let him have the kids. Mark Redwine was arrested today, more than four and a half years after his son Dylan disappeared. The 13-year-old was last seen alive November 2012 during a court-ordered visit with his dad. The following year, some of his remains were found just eight miles from his father's home. At the time, Mr. Redwine told Denver 7 by phone he wanted to know where Dylan's remains were found so he could be close to his son. It's hard for them to describe to me the exact location that they found these remains. I've asked uh, members of law enforcement to stop by and uh, I want to talk to them about going to the location so I can be close to my son. But the indictment reveals a subsequent search found Dylan's blood in multiple locations at Mark's home. A police dog detected a cadaver scent in Redwine's living room and his washing machine. 
Dylan's skull was found in November of 2015, just one and a half miles away. It had injuries consistent with blunt force trauma. My greatest hope is that Dylan gets justice. Betsy Horvath says the arrest is just the beginning of a long road ahead, and her heart breaks for Dylan's mom and brother. The, the scariest part is it could have been my child. Now filing lawsuits. Dylan's dad, Mark Redwine, who was named as a person of interest in his son's 2012 death, is now blaming Dylan's mom, Elaine Hall, for a pattern of actions he says led to the boy's murder. In Redwine's new lawsuit, he says his ex-wife made inaccurate representations about domestic violence and campaigned to get law enforcement to consider him a suspect in Dylan's death. Well, Elaine Hall filed a wrongful death lawsuit against her ex-husband. That was back in June. Both parents have been very vocal, airing their differences.